The key is not stopping. The key is finding what you are able to do and do everything that is in your possibilities and try to get better a little bit every day. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gore Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is an Italian endurance beast, an extremely strong athlete, somebody who achieves often the impossible in his workouts and uh, the first and only barbarian in, in Italy. And uh, I'm really happy to welcome you to the show, Sergio Di Pasquale. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a I'm pleasure. For me, it's also a big pleasure. Uh, now I was so concentrating that I pronounced it in the in the Italian in the right way. <laughs> uh -huh, don't worry, you did great. You did great. Can, can you can you say it once uh, for you for you? It sounds better. Oh, it's Sergio Di Pasquale. Pasquale, nice. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, let's kick off for the people who don't know you. Who is Sergio, and mm -hmm. uh, what what kind of person are you? Yeah. All right. So first of all. Uh, I'm from Italy. I've lived in Italy my whole life. And I am the first and only Italian barbarian. I've become a barbarian in 2017. So it's, it's like, yeah, three years, almost four years now that I've been one officially. So it's about to be more time that I've been a barbarian officially than, you know, the time that it took me to get there actually since I started. Because I started training in 2014 when I was 16 years old. And I've been at it consistently for the, these past seven years, nonstop. <laughs> It's like day in, day in. And all in all, really, I just started because I wanted to become better and stronger And that's what I've been striving to do since the beginning. Nice. Sounds already great. You're 22 now, right? Exactly. I'm about to turn 23 in some days. Oh, you know? okay. Uh, on the 23rd of December. Oh, okay. Great. Um, and uh, for the people, because I recognize the shirt, I just uh, yeah, w watched of some of your, your YouTube videos and I recognize, this, I recognize this shirt from the video mm -hmm. three years ago when you uh, yeah, posted your, uh, your uh, let's say, test. Uh, how, how's it mm -hmm. called? Um, your yeah, it's the requirements. The requirements. requirements. That was my official attempt at it. And that is when I got my uh, gold wings, you know, which actually represents the official complete um, membership in the Barbarians, in the Barbarians family. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that there are some new listeners who don't know who the Barbarians are, what mm -hmm. are these requirements. Can you maybe tell me? I can present those? that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so the Barbarians are... Uh, a calisthenics family. We refer to each other as brothers and we feel like a real family. So it's not really exact to say we are a team, but we are also a team. We can be seen that way. <laughs> and Barbarians originated in Brooklyn in, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, in 2004. Like on the shirts, we got 2006 written on it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but yes. if I'm not mistaken... It's, it's in 2004, and Barbarian's founder is Zef Zaccavelli, calisthenics legend. I think many, many know him, and many were inspired by him as I was. No? And um, yeah, the Barbarians, we are a family, but you know, apart from the relationship of trust, loyalty, between each other, which is crucial to becoming a member, uh, we also have physical requirements. So it is a routine that any uh, wannabe barbarian have to pass and have to complete under a certain time frame, time limit, under the judgment of Zeb Zakavali's criteria. And if everything goes well, And if you are also recognized, you know, as a true brother, member of the family, you will receive your gold wings. That's pretty much how it works. The routine, 
these were actually, um, you know, to my knowledge, the first ever requirements in uh, any calisthenics team. Let's use the, that word uh, in this in this case. And that uh, a lot of other teams followed uh, the, the same trend and, you know, made up their own requirement routines. But ours should be the first. That's what I know. And it consists of, as of now, and it's been some years like, uh, like that, five muscle-ups, 50 parallel bars dips, 30 pull-ups, 60 floor push-ups, and another five muscle-ups to end everything unbroken in that precise order under five minutes. So if the, if, if the form is all right, at least physically, you are, you are ready to become a barbarian. Okay, and unbroken means you're not allowed to rest in between, for example, the, the dips or the push-ups. Exactly. Um, you know, you can actually recharge in a lockout position um, of the various exercise. You cannot leave the instrument, though. You, you cannot, mm -hmm. like, um, uh, stop holding the bar with one end during the pull-ups while the other one is still gripping or anything like that. Also, the push-ups, you shouldn't lower your waist or, you know, keep your butt high. You should stay in a, in a solid state of plank. Um, but apart from that, yeah, it's unbroken. And it should ideally be straight, straight reps, not even resting, not even during the sets. Wow. Well. Yeah. So uh, first of all, for everybody who is interested in uh, seeing you perform the requirements, we will put um, your YouTube video in the description. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's come back before we go dive into your workout, into your preparation for the requirements, etc. Um, the two hard facts that people always ask, how tall and how heavy are you? Oh, so I'm not that tall. You could ask how short I am. I'm 170, 170 mm -hmm. centimeters. It should be, what is it? Five foot five, five foot six, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. And weight, I should be 72 kilograms. Between 70 and 74, around that weight. Okay. And you always keep this weight during the year? Yeah, practically all year round because I do not follow a strict diet. So being so flexible, my weight also fluctuates um, a bit around these numbers. But the fact that I'm always training and striving to improve my performance keeps everything in balance. Okay. Then let's jump to the 16-year-old Sergio, um, who is starting to work out. How did you get in touch with calisthenics? What did you do before? let us take part in your in your beginning sure sure man that's quite a story actually <laughs> because i was a kid first of all like i was in high school it was like third year of high school there and um i literally had no idea of what i wanted to be you know when i grew up uh what job would i take on um what type of person i, I wanted to be or I had some vague ideas, you know, um, maybe some, um, some faraway ideas of what a good person should be. And, but I felt so, so far away from that because I was weak, much weaker than I am right now. Like I'm, I still am, but I got a little better <laughs> since I was 16. And to me, you know, a good person should also be strong. Uh, physically, of course, but strength is an all-around value, uh, all-around quality that then you can transfer and throughout your life and deal with maybe difficult circumstances. So I really wanted to, to train, to, to get tougher, tougher physically, tougher mentally, um, inspired as many people's by, you know, cartoons. Um, I started training um and i actually started by running you know so i didn't even know exactly what calisthenics was i just started running you know trying to get a little bit more fit and then uh for some reason i found some calisthenics videos on youtube 
one of the most famous videos at the time, which was one of Frank Medrano. That was literally the first person I ever saw, you know, in real life and outside of cartoons doing pull-ups. And just that, you know, struck me. And I was, man, I want to be able to do that too. To me, already that, already seeing even a half one arm pull-up pull up, seemed out of this world, for real. <laughs> it seemed so cool. And I wanted to be like that, you know, seeing all those, uh, visible muscles and striation because he's also a pretty lean, lean guy. So I just wanted to become more like that. Let's put it this way. And I started looking for some basic routines that a beginner could follow. So I started, um, while I also was running, incorporating a little bit of basic ex- exercises, a couple of pull-ups, mainly Australian pull-ups because I couldn't do two pull-ups. Wow. Uh, in a row and some push-ups um, and even for the push-ups I wasn't really at a good level like I could do 10 but with bad form and practically not breathing <laughs> and 10 push-ups were enough to to make me become all red in the face but I kept at it I kept looking for motivation on YouTube mainly because, you know, around here, I didn't really know people that would train in this style. And I don't really know anyone as of now, actually not many, um, you know, choose uh, this route precisely. Not yet though. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I hope for that to change in the future. Mm -hmm. But while I was watching now many different videos from many different athletes. Um, I also discovered the UK guys, you know, um, big shout out to Ranjit, uh, if that's how it's pronounced, and Solo, which were a big, big, huge motivation for me when I was starting. And were actually the first guys I ever saw do a muscle up with 20 kg. With the judo belt, with the judo belt, this is <laughs> this was yeah. like their style, and yeah. That, and that blew my mind. Yeah. Um, and just by you know the U- YouTube algorithm doing its magic, <laughs> one day I got into my recommendations the the video that changed my life. One of Zeph's videos, one of his uh, his most viewed ones, the one who, uh, that is called like real extreme motivations, something like that. That video changed me. That's where I discovered Zep, Mm -hmm. founder and leader of Barbarians. And I just wanted to know who was that Superman, like real life Superman doing all those crazy, crazy, crazy things. And hearing him talk as well in the video, uh, there are a couple of monologues in that video that became mantras for me that that really made me fall in love with the barbarian philosophy. Well, and then the what did you do with this motivation, with these uh, ideas from the video? Did you go out, start training? Did you write a, a training schedule? What what was what were the next steps? Yeah, uh, before, of course, seeing the Zeph video, I had already started training. So just my my motivation kept increasing uh, as I was also seeing physical results and performance uh, improvements. I just kept going, wanting to become stronger and stronger, as strong as my examples. So I just kept going. Um, and of course, with time, trying to put myself out there, starting to upload videos first on Facebook and then on YouTube and tagging every single one of my motivations on my videos so they could see it and acknowledge me, acknowledge my presence. You could say in the game, me trying to, to become stronger and better and doing it. So it was a, you know, a testimony to my consistency Mm -hmm. that I wanted them to be a part of. Um, And, you know, I actually, 
um, it was thanks to Cyborg that I really was inspired one day to follow the barbarian route, you know, um, because I was posting my videos. I was posting my videos on Facebook. And of course, like my form isn't perfect even now. Back then, it was <laughs> worse than ever. It was bad. <laughs> um, you know how when you train and keep training, your your mind also evolves and you learn to f see things that were totally invisible um, before because um, your sensibility increases. So the mistakes I did, I didn't even recognize them as mistakes. I learned to do that, you know, after, after some time. Um, so I um, received some critiques, but I was stubborn. I just, I, I, I had been putting so much passion in it. And, and that's what I do still to this day that I didn't really care. But um, seeing that some people were, you know, commenting with some, you know, more or less uh, objective, but also maybe a little bit mean uh, truths about my, my execution, my form, um, Cybob chose to send me a couple of uh, video messages on Facebook. And that is, that was crazy to me. Like this guy was already a pretty sick athlete, you, you know, I might say, um, chose to contact me um, out of his own just will to, to help me and told me not to pay attention to the critiques and focus more on the positive and on people like the barbarians. He said, focus on people like us who encourage you to become better. And, you know, those were, that, that was just another piece to the puzzle that made me get more and more interested to being a part of the exact barbarian reality um, instead of any other reality that was out there. Okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a big part. That's a big thing. So since um, when you started with sixteen, since how many years was it the goal to achieve this these requirements? How long did you really focus on the on the requirements? Not only working out to achieve your goals to become stronger, but mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. precise goal. So since yeah, I started talking uh, with Cyborg and, you know, tagging other barbarians into my workouts. My goal was that of completing the requirements so that I could join the family. Even though I didn't really know yet what it meant to be part of the family, even when I got my wings, I still had many things to, to learn about it, to the importance of the, you know, the, the, the brethren, uh, the, the brotherhood. Um, it's, I, I had hints of that, uh, not really a full, mm, more in-depth comprehension like I have now at least, but I was lucky that Zef so, uh, um, saw much more into the future that, than me at the time. And that was really a blessing. But yeah, you could say that since I was around 18, Mm, because I became a barbarian at 19, I really started to focus uh, with the requirements completion as a goal. Now, I didn't really um, try them out, you know, try the routine out many, many times before the official attempt, but I just kept getting stronger on all fundamentals of calisthenics and the improvements on the routine just came because that's just a test of your strength, endurance. Uh, generally, it's not something out of this world. If you are training fundamentals, you are going to find precisely those in the routine of the requirements. Um, so there's, of course, a high, high level transfer with, without the real need of attempting it every single week. At least that wasn't my strategy. I really just train like an animal, <laughs> even doing more than I maybe that I should have done to mm -hmm. reach the level needed. 
because you're overtrained or I didn't really get into overtraining territory but I got myself some inflammation of mm. course you know in the elbow area and so after getting my wings um, I had to turn it down a bit just uh, take a couple of steps back and build the same level of strength or of course even more strength but more gradually mainly but but I was so hungry I was so hungry and I was doing sets of 30 pull-ups uh, one month before the requirements or sets of 60 dip not even with the best form but I wanted to own the numbers that I would have had to face in the official test. So even if my level wasn't there yet, I kind of forced myself to be at that level, you know, at a peak before uh, actually making it mine without the um, physical repercussions that could arise from an exaggeration in training. And if I tell you now, let's do the barbarian requirements, would you be able to uh -huh. do it? Of course. Always. You have to. You okay. have to. Like, you are a barbarian, but you have to renew your gold wings every day. It doesn't mean you have to, be, to, to do the requirements every day, but you have to be able to do the requirements every day. Okay. Yeah, because I like, <laughs> I just have to think of my sports teacher. I don't know if it's the same in Italy, but the sports teachers at school, they always have a big belly, you know, like they, they have this life. They, they yeah, did their studies once. And it's after the same. That... <laughs> it's the same. Mostly it's the same here. You're not going to find like super elite athletes in school. I don't think at least not amongst the teachers uh, that can happen. If I manage to become a, a teacher, that could be a reality, but I don't really aim to be a, a PE teacher. So it's still different. Okay. <laughs> Great. So a uh, different mentality that's, than sports teachers. That's uh, a good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so to take us within uh, your life. Um, what are your, your profession? What is your profession? What do you study right now? How does it look like? All right. So right now, as far as uh, profession is concerned, I'm an online coach mainly, and I've been uh, an online coach uh, since 2018. So it's more than two years now, and it's going fairly well. I'm very happy of the direction that uh, it has taken. Like my students are a, a constant supply of motivation and also satisfaction and pride because they keep getting better, they keep getting, getting stronger. Um, I'm, I'm really, really proud. Um, and as far as studies, I am a language student. I am a university student. Um, I'm in the languages and foreign uh, uh, literatures course. So, you know, I'm not really sure if I'm going to become an English teacher in the future, but that's a perspective that I, that I like compared to, to other ones, for sure. And it's just a safety net. You don't have to do it if the, if the coaching stuff, et cetera, goes well. Um, it's just something. Well, the coaching is already going fairly well, as I said. But for some reason, I feel like this university uh, journey is part of my overall journey, life journey, as much as training calisthenics and the whole barbarian reality is. You know, I got, I got my beliefs, and that's why I stick to things that I find meaningful in my life. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. Take us uh, in a typical day um, of, of Sergio. Um, you wake up at what time? What do you do afterwards? What do you eat? Oh, man. Look, <laughs> right now, of course, uh, due to the COVID situation as well, my days are fairly boring. Um, there's not really anything super exciting going on, <laughs> as you can imagine. Just when I have lessons, courses, 
I wake up at around, I guess, 7, 7.30, and I get ready for the courses in the morning. Um, then after the courses, the lessons are done, I have lunch, and right after lunch, I may answer some of my students' messages, and around 3, 4 o'clock, I go to the park that I built together with my father in my in my garden and I and I train for you know um, a couple hours at least or three or four it depends on the routine and after the routine I just come back home and focus again on on the coaching work um, answer some more questions maybe make some video calls if some of my students need it, uh, if they need some counseling or they need me to motivate them during uh, uh, a training session or correct their form in real time. Um, just that, after, after doing work like that, I maybe focus on some other project that I got going or relax by watching a movie why not? Or reading. Reading is also an activity that I enjoy while the, all the, the work for the day is done. Yeah, nothing crazy, nothing too special right now. I hope I'll have the occasion of, you know, traveling again soon, maybe teaching uh, again in, uh, in person, other people, and uh, maybe meet some other members of the family as soon as I can. Because it's been... It's been some time now that I've yeah. seen them the last time, and I'd love to see, to meet them again. I can imagine. Three or four hours of workout. How, how yeah. many times per three week? Is like the, three is like the average. Okay. When I got exams for the university to prepare, uh, it could be even one and a half, two hours. When I, you know, when I'm free, it could even go up to five sometimes. Mm. It depends on, on the goal of the day. But average is three, and I train. Um, it's kind of peculiar now, the situation, because I train seven days in a row, and then I got a day of rest. Mm -hmm. So my schedule, due to the uh, number of exercises and the frequency that I want to maintain for each of them, I need... Um, like eight days in a weekly cycle, let's call it that. So I need seven days straight of training, and then I got a rest day. Okay. Interesting. Um, because if I watch your numbers of your workouts, it's often that I think, oh, this is yeah, great for maybe for a week or even two weeks of workout, uh, these numbers, <laughs> uh, and you do them in, in three hours. Um, Tell us more. When you go into into a workout, um, what, how, how is your mindset? What are your goals? Is everything written down, everything planned out? Or do you do also mm -hmm. some spontaneous workout? Tell us more about that. Um, I am very methodic in my workouts, like how they are structured. But my decisions on the routine of the day are very spontaneous. They are very much influenced by the way I feel that day. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, it's many times it's a struggle. It's a battle between uh, um, wanting to to complete a routine that maybe is too hard for that day, and you know the um, the, the rationality of adapting the the numbers for how you feel because. You know, we need challenges as athletes to become better. We cannot really relax during training. That's not how it works. That's, that's not how you get better. But you cannot uh, um, force yourself to to go too much over the, um, the boundaries that you can actually manage for a certain day. So you really have to be good at listening yourself and know and knowing what you can actually do for that day. It's important that you always uh, challenge yourself, but in a smart way, in a smart way. That's very important. That's my, my approach to it. So I really try to feel how 
um, I am on a certain day and base my routine on that. I try not to make changes to the routine once I've decided what to do. Um, but if they are necessary, I will make some adjustments. But again, for the, you know, the, the matter of uh, building up discipline, if it goes wrong, you know, the, the, the decision of the routine, then you still gotta, you gotta bring it on as it is. That's why you gotta be good at listening yourself because you just throw around numbers that you can manage that are totally wrong and off your uh, real possibilities, you're gonna be in a pickle. Um, that's my approach. Um, my routine are not too complicated. Like they're very basic. Uh, some, many uh, might find them boring, but reaching a certain objective, which I decided at the beginning of the workout, uh, is in itself a uh, big, big, um, you know, um, it's a, uh, it satisfies you a lot. It's, it's, it's in, um, it's difficult to describe. It's a, it's a feeling very, very hard to describe, but it makes all the suffering, all the fatigue worth in, at the end of the, the workout. Okay. Yeah. And um, what is your split? You know, I mean, you're like, you have seven days of workout in a row. Um, yeah, but of course I, I have a split for different muscle groups every day. Um, actually different movements because mm -hmm. I focus on the movements itself themselves. And uh, so it goes like this. My first day of the week uh, right now is uh, weight and muscle ups. All right. Because uh, I want to get better at muscle ups and I want to keep the stimulus of weighted as well in this exercise as I, uh, as I do for the other ones. But it's not too it's not too heavy generally. Like um, it's not often that I use 20 kg. I maintain a, a lower weight so that I, so that I can do a higher number even if it's weighted. Uh, then I got weighted pull ups the day after, and then again I got weighted weighted dips the day after that. Um, after the the weighted, I got the um, the day of rest up to the weighted dips. And then I got again, bodyweight muscle-ups, bodyweight pull-ups, uh, bodyweight pushing, which could be either push-ups or dips, done bodyweight this time, and squats. After squats, I don't have a rest day. Uh, the day of squats acts as my rest day. So the, the, the day after, I start again with weighted muscle-ups. And this is where the seven days in a row come in. Okay. Squats is your rest day. Sounds good. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's body weight though. Yeah. I just do thousands of thousands of them. Yeah. It's not weighted. <laughs> That's why it's, it's sort of like cardio if you think about it. So you do it um, because of aesthetics, because of your heart. What is the reason that you work on squats? Because uh, with your goals, with your. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, definitely see an improvement in my general shape and proportions since I started training squats. But if you, I, I truly believe that if you get to a high uh, level of performance on bodyweight squats, it is highly beneficial all around for your endurance in any other exercise because, mm -hmm. you know, legs are the biggest muscle group in the, in the body. And while you do squats, you have to move the whole weight of your body. If you reach the level where you can do 200 squats straight uh, in the same rhythm, or you can do 2,000 squats in a training session in around two hours, then any other exercise uh, or any uh, endurance-focused uh, routine It's going to be a breeze, especially if there are no, no squats in there because every other exercise demands less from your, from your body and your art. 
and, and all that, you know, your lungs, your uh, breathing capacity. It's, I truly believe it's highly beneficial training uh, squats in the endurance style for the purpose of improving your endurance overall. Okay. And do you also feel that you have like more stable joints and uh, like more, I don't know, the hip, you know, like just seeing really, really long term, seeing you in mm -hmm. 60, 70 years, do you think you will benefit from doing a lot of squats or is it um, even bad for, for knees? Like if you tell, I don't know, I just, I just imagine you tell a normal person on the street, yeah, this is Sergio. He does uh, 1,500 squats in a training session. Um, yeah, that's pretty low, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's maintainment, but yeah, yeah but I this person know. will be like, it can be, yeah. yeah, I understand, but I, I, I think it's going to be beneficial even uh, from a structural standpoint. Um, joints can adapt. The most important thing is that you reach certain numbers gradually. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I trained squats um, now some years ago, I did actually something pretty stupid, and I did a thousand. I did 50 sets of 20 in a couple hours, actually. So that's very bad for performance. <laughs> But I couldn't walk for a week because I hadn't been training squats for the rest of my training, you know, um, career. Uh, let's call it that. And now that I've built my endurance, uh, muscular endurance um, with squats, I can easily do a thousand squats in, uh, what is it, like 20 on the minute for 50 minutes. So it's less than half the time that it took me when I started. And the next day I'm, I'm fine. And this is say insane for me. You, I know you say it <laughs> as if it would be nothing, but that's really insane because the, the thing is, since I follow you, I'm like also um, motivated to do uh, the EMOM, uh, EMOM uh, method, uh, which is that's like, great. which is I love cool, it. I love which is cool if you have also, if you have, mm, if you don't have a lot of time and mm -hmm. for me, exactly. Often, often when I come home, uh, come home um, really late and I really just want to throw a 10, 15 minutes workout, this is the best thing for me. But like everybody, every friend, every family member that I told, yeah, um, try it. Uh, they all overestimated them because it sounds so easy to do 10 pull-ups for 10 minutes, um, yeah. like 100 pull-ups in 10 minutes. It, it doesn't sound too crazy, but everybody who tried it, And who is not like an elite athlete, they will feel pain and they will feel some, some, yeah. Yeah. It, it depends, you know, the, the number that you choose to, to keep on the minute uh, depends very much on your level. And it's very, a very important choice. My record for 10 pull-ups on the minute anyway uh, is 200 minutes straight. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> yeah, you can be. That's really insane. Um, and for everybody who is listening now and who is like really motivated, and that's maybe what also happened for you for the squats that you just uh, did like crazy numbers in, in, in the first mm -hmm. try. Uh, what can you rec uh, recommend to the people um, being motivated after this, uh, this interview and starting with crazy numbers? Should they, how should they approach the, the, their work? As I said, um, graduality is crucial. I believe that you can reach any number you want to reach in a training session. You can reach any number you want in a single set, any number you want in a training session. You know, uh, being reasonable with the differences between these two things. Like, for example, um, uh, my, one of my goals now is 200 push-ups straight, which would take around two minutes if done at a, at a decent speed. And... I've done 5K in a training, so at least I'm at least thinking about reaching 10K in a training session. So you see, you know, it's two different types of uh, tests of endurance. But as long as you, uh, as you build a gradual journey uh, and you are smart about it, how you increase when you can and you decrease when you need to, you can just keep improving overall and reach any goal because it's, it's a matter of letting your body adapt to, to the stimuli that you get it. It's just that it's that simple. 
it takes a lot of mental strength because, you know, doing the same thing over and over on the minute on such a strict, um, you know, time frame for hundreds of minutes straight can be really hard on your mind if you're not adapted to it. But you can train your mind too. And if you train your mind, the body follows and you can reach any goal, any goal that you set yourself to reach. You just have to be motivated and even more important, disciplined. Put in the struggle and the sacrifice. Make the sacrifice necessary to reach a goal if it's truly one of your goals, one of your dreams. It has to have a meaning or else you're not going to put 100% into it. And if you want to reach something, you will. That's just how it works. you got to be smart about the strategy that you use and be gradual, you know, be patient. If you have to make, uh, you know, five sessions of 50 minutes uh, so that you can prepare to do a single session of 60, do it. That's the right path. You know, just as an example, those are random numbers. Okay. How does one train his mind? You know, it's it's easily said. Um, mm -hmm. Your your body can follow the mind, etc. Uh, what are the yeah. um, what is the advice that you can give to the people who want to train their mind? Mainly, you have to try push yourself forward a bit forward every day. It doesn't have to be huge jumps, as we said. It's graduality is the key. The um, you know, if you think about it, you can rationally conclude that if you do 50 today, nothing stops you from doing 51 the day after. And once you've done 51, you can try 52. It's not going to be that big of a difference. But in the long run, if you keep that mentality, you will be at 70 and you, you haven't even realized it. That's it. It's small, small steps. Just a little bit more. You don't have to force yourself to pass out or, you know, try to jump from zero to 100 or from 100 to 1,000. You just have to go from 100 to 101. That, that's the best way to, to do it. And it's going to be as hard as the 100, you know? It's going to be as hard, the, the 101 is going to be as hard as the 100. The 102 is going to be um, as hard as the, um, as the 101. So you have to be able to, um, to, to face the same level of hardship every day. That you got to be able to endure. It's patience. It's resilience. That's the most important. But as long as you are able to put a little bit more in it you, you're gonna be you're gonna be doing miles and miles of progress just takes time okay so something that i asked myself in the beginning of the interview is how did you become this superhuman what are the your secrets um <laughs> and maybe this is already one thing um like the consistency, like the, the patience um, that you have, like the, the consistency, you're doing it like for six years now. Um, did you have mm -hmm. any big, um, I don't know, interruptions or uh, yeah, rest in between like weeks mm -hmm. or was mm -hmm. it for six years discipline? Okay, so um, um, I can say that a part of your question has already been answered. You know, consistency is crucial. It's crucial. It's the most important thing, the most important, there's nothing more important. Um, and, you know, linking to this, um, in this six, almost seven years of training now, I've had some stops, minor stops. Um, I don't think I stopped for more than a week, more than one time in my first year when, uh, when I almost passed out one time and I got scared, but even if my, um, you know, my parents told me to take it easier because uh, I risked passing out again, I just kept being drawn to that bar. 
So I got back to it. I made my choice and I haven't stopped since. I have had some cases in which I had to stop a couple of days, but my mentality has been like one whole big continuous uh, effort, really. And, and that's, that I think is the key because you said I'm superhuman and I thank you so much for that. <laughs> But I do not feel really any different from when I started. Just the fact is when I started, I happened to be able to do uh, two bad pull-ups. Now I can do 50, but I can do sets of 50. <laughs> but there, there's no difference really. Like I feel the exact same. The level of strength and of ability doesn't really change who you are shouldn't change the mentality you got uh, towards training because I still feel like I've got so much to improve and to work on. It's, it's been the same since the beginning. My level has gotten up, but the level of, uh, you know, work, struggle, uh, and passion that I, that I put in is like almost, is the same. It's just proportioned to, to the increase of my level. And Again, as far as stops, luckily, apart from some inflammation, especially on my elbow joints, I haven't really had any major injury. This year, I have had actually three times a uh, chest injury, which uh, was really, really um, different from anything else that I've ever had because it actually prevented me from doing pushing movements um, without pain. Like I could do half a push-up, just come down for half of the motion and I would feel pain in my chest. But um, from what I can remember, I took a stop of two days. And even with a little bit of pain, really, really, uh, re, um, how can you say it? Uh, readjusting the the amount of work that I was doing, I never stopped training, never stopped moving. Like I went from doing twenty five hundred push ups to a hundred in a day, you know, and that's a big big jump. But I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped. I kept working, reinforcing the weaknesses, healing myself through the movement, and now. I'm stronger than I've ever been, even in pushing movements. That's the key. The key is not stopping. The key is finding what you are able to do and do everything that is in your possibilities and try to get better a little bit every day. I feel so motivated already. It's like a motivational speech, <laughs> but I know that you're like... Yeah, you that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what I'm here for. Nice. And I, I really uh, think that people will appreciate. Um, Thank you so much. That's really Thank great to so hear. Um, I know that you, um, yeah, that you uh, get asked. I watched your uh, Instagram uh, comments, etc. People ask, mm -hmm. can you do a planche? And uh, you, you just answer no, uh, but I still ask the question: Do you do you do skills sometimes? Does it doesn't it interest you, or what's the reason? Um, all right. So actually, um, I have come to discover that um, front levers, or at least you know, working on front lever in some way. And this teaching comes from my teacher, Zeb Zaccavelli, helps your muscle up. So if you want to improve your muscle up, it could, you know, be um, of, of help also uh, training a movement such as the lever. But um, if it's just about skills, um, I'm not really interested in uh, doing it just in the first place or improvement in that field. I don't really feel that is my calling. If you want to, you want to say that, um, 
it doesn't stimulate me as much as reaching other types of goals, which are obviously related to the fundamentals of calisthenics. That's just the way I am. To me, um, let's say a set of 100 straight push-ups is more impressive than a planche, even if it might be easier. I, I can't really can't really pronounce myself on that because I, I have no idea about the uh, difficulty of a uh, full planche or the, the journey that it takes to get there. It's just, it's just not my discipline, uh, if you, if you will. And, um, even more than a single set of a hundred doing 10 sets of a hundred, that to me would be, really really phenomenal and it makes everything else like planches and maltese disappear <laughs> it's just it's just not my focus it's not what i care about okay get it and um the other thing that i asked myself did you or do you sometimes try out your one rep max so uh one rep with the maximum weight or is it also something that's uh -huh. I also, yeah, I try that from time to time, my one rep max for pull-ups and dips. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, they are decent numbers, at least for the, for the pushing department, uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident I can do more than 100 kg dip. For the pull-up part, I can pull um, 70, 75 kg, so my body weight at least pretty confidently. I haven't really um, pulled a whole 80 kg yet, uh, but I like to, I like to, definitely. Again, though, it's not really my focus. When I train, I like a lot being at least, you know, around the 10 reps, 8 to 10, even for the higher, higher weights that I use. When I do weighted, if I do pull-ups with 50 kg, I aim to do some sets of 10. Um, And if I'm, if I'm training with lower weights, 40 or 20 kg, I aim to do higher rep sets. It's not really into my style of training, doing sets of three or sets of one. And of course, not training specifically for a certain goal. That's why the performance doesn't really benefit um, as much as it could. It's not my focus. So I, I think it's natural uh, it not being like the ideal in proportion to my weight, perhaps. Um, I like my strength going up, but of course, as you said in the beginning, I'm an endurance athlete. So uh, that's what I focus more on. Okay. Makes sense. And uh, yeah, I, I appreciate or I respect somebody who is like clear about his goals, clear about his um, yeah uh, direction where he wants to go. So um, yeah, one Thank doesn't you. have to do every everything. And uh, yeah. Um, let's talk about your nutrition. Uh, you said that you don't have this uh, stable nutrition or like uh, you're, you're eating quite flexible. Um, um, yeah, it's, I'd say it's pretty stable right now because I eat, um, you know, the same things routinely. Actually, I, I live at home with my parents. So when I don't go to university, lunch is what my, my mom prepares me. And it's a full meal. You know, you got a uh, first dish with pasta. You got a second dish with some meat, fish, or eggs, anything based on on, uh, you know, something more proteic. Uh, you got some veggies on the side. So my meals are pretty full. Uh, it's just that I don't really focus on what exactly I put in. I don't count macros. I don't even count calories. Um, I mainly use what I eat as fuel. I don't eat shit, <laughs> and that's the thing. But I love ice cream, for example, mm -hmm. and you know, some chocolate here and there. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> no, I don't want to seem like one who stuffs his face with, with sweets, but I don't really, I don't really see it as a problem as long as my training is really hard and efficient. Plus I'm young. So nutrition, uh, my nutrition is not the worst. Again, it's pretty complete. I, I think like I can get, 
and I do get all the most important nutrients uh, from uh, from my from my meals, but I don't focus heavily on it, like specifically. Okay, and do you take supplements? I don't. I never did. If ice cream counts as a supplement, <laughs> I do. But uh, if not, then no, I don't. Okay, so not even like health supplements, let's call them, uh, I don't know, some vitamins no. or fish no. oil. Okay, well, great. Um, do you want to, um, uh, how to call it, uh, reason it? Uh, because people are asking now, oh, how, how can you do it? Uh, like uh, for, the, for the supplements? Do you have a reason do why you, you mean? don't? Do you have a reason why oh, you don't take supplements? Oh, if I supplement? have a precise reason? Um, look, I think they can be very useful, but there has to be a need for them. You know, you, you, as much as I, as maybe you want me to give a reason not to take them, I think the most important thing actually is having a reason to take them. Okay. Because it might be just superfluous for most people that just you know buy into the craze of supplements and they're not even sure about what's really in the supplements that they're taking they're just following the um, general advice of their most um estimated influencers and not even doing the the research about it it's if you take it superficially how do you know you're really optimizing your, you know, your intake and your performance. Uh, either you do it really, you know, with your, with your brain <laughs> or it's, it's just, it's literally just as me not taking any and, you know, going with, uh, going with the flow. Okay. Great. Um, Last question before we come to the quick questions, quick answers. Um, okay. What are your goals for 2021? And what can people expect from you? What can we expect from you? Oh, man. <laughs> um, look, I am the kind of guy that tries to live the moment and the day. So I try to make the best out of my days. But of course, I've got some big, big goals. For, for next year. For example, as I said, I'd love to start traveling again to teach. And I love, if I, if I can, to travel to, to New York to meet my barbarian family at the Mecca. So in Brooklyn, uh, in those legendary parks that I just seen, that I've just seen on YouTube up until now. That would be a great experience that I want to live, I want to meet. Again, other members of the family, uh, for example, from Spain in general, there's, you know, Javi is there, the, the, the man, the young man who became a barbarian right after me, another super strong dude and a great person. So I just want to, I just want to mainly reconnect with all those people that make it possible, possible for me to stay motivated. And, and keep going, you know, feel that sense of responsibility to, to keep getting better as an athlete and better as a person. So also meeting with my students uh, now, if I have the, the opportunity, it would be great because it's always great when we meet. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'll be able to, to finish my course of studies. I don't think it's going to be, It's going to be over in 2021. Maybe it's going to be, that's going to be for 2022, early, you know, 2022. So I'm just going to keep working towards that goal. And as far as bigger goals, you know, um, I'm thinking about uh, a lot of things, like really, really um, making the whole, Uh, environment that maybe stems from me here in Italy bigger and uh, being able to spread the barbarian philosophy uh, even wider and make it more renowned and appreciated here in Italy. But that's just a gradual process. Like it's not something that can happen 
happen, uh, you know, over a, a nice time. I'm just going to keep working towards those bigger goals and try to represent Barbarians best that I can. And of course, keep getting stronger, 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 and stronger towards my athletic goals. Oh. Like I want to, I really want to, want to show numbers that no one has ever done in, uh, in the history of the world. Wow. Looking forward to that. Um, this episode <laughs> will, will come out in the beginning of 2021. So uh, the people who are listening to this uh, will probably uh, or will hopefully take a lot of motivation with it. Um, but I'm pretty I sure about so. that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing everything. Um, now to the really important questions, pizza or burger? I, I will go with pizza, especially <laughs> because I'm from Italy. I think I, I owe that to, to, my, to my land, pizza, okay. 100%. I love burgers, but it's pizza. Okay. Uh, do you prefer dogs or cats? Dogs. I like both. But I prefer dogs. Okay. I got three dogs. Oh, wow. actually, I'm sorry. I had three dogs and I've got two. One oh. passed away so recently that I still say I've got three. Oh. But, you know, that's life. That's life, yeah. Um, your favorite location for holidays? Um, wherever my family is. Okay. Like, I like cool places, but I care about the people more. Get it. 100% sure. Um, do you have a favorite calisthenics athlete? Or maybe a top three Zef of people? Zakavelli. Zef, Zef Zakavelli. okay. The favorite is Zef Zakavelli, yeah. and the rest is all from my family. Like, I don't want to really sound yeah. like uh, um, a super fanboy, but that's, that's <laughs> the way it is. Like, yeah. you've got ice water, huge inspiration for me like i've been trying to be more like him since i've since i've seen him on youtube and especially since i've met him when i got my my wings same same discourse i could i could make for my brother javi from spain again he's a legend super strong a great person and of course much respect to cyborg which played a huge part in me becoming a barber and, and you know history History is history and cannot be forgotten. I owe him a lot. Great. Is that, yeah. is that to talk though? Okay. That's, that's a given. Okay. He's the GOAT. <laughs> nice. Um, do you have a hate exercise, uh, an, a nightmare exercise? A nightmare exercise, man. I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> if that trophy will go to burpees or sit-ups because <laughs> I hate them both. Okay. Uh, one of those two works okay. for, for different reasons. Yeah, I can, I can relate. Uh, do you have a favorite book that you want to recommend? Oh, favorite book. Man, that's, that's a tough one. Um, you know, there is, um, there is a book that I liked a lot when I was in high school and it's called the man who folded himself. Mm -hmm. And it's a science fiction book about time travel and the eternal recurrence, you know, theory of Nietzsche. Uh, if you, if you've seen the, the movie predestination, you know, it follows the same, the same principles. Okay. Okay, we'll put it in the description. Um, David Gerald is the is the author of the book. Okay, the man who folded himself. I loved it. It's even Great. it's even short. Really, you 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 can read it in a in a couple of hours, some hours in, in two really. sets, <laughs> twenty reps. Okay, uh, <laughs> the best calisthenics event you've ever visited. Well, that will have to to go to you know. Um, all right, it's a bit hard, but that will have to go to 2018 first uh, endurance uh, legend tournament that I attended to, which was actually the, um, the volume two of the competition that my brother uh, Pierre Piazza organized here in Italy. 
that was phenomenal. That's that's the time that I first meet, uh, met Javi. That's the time that I lost to Saibo in the final, but it, <laughs> it still was legendary, great memories. That's a week I will never forget. And that event to, to culminate it was really a uh, high, high, huge, huge point, you know. Great. And if you have to decide body weight or weighted? 100% body weight. I like weighted a lot, but man, body weight cannot be beat in any way. Okay. It's just magic. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Sergio, how can people get in touch with you? How can they contact you for coaching, for questions, for all this? Oh, they can, they can text me mainly on Instagram. I will answer the DMs, you know, based on my time availability. Uh, I try to answer. I always try to answer everybody, but there's a lot of messages. So it's at Sergio underscore Di Pasquale uh, underscore AKA underscore New Era. That's, <laughs> That's the longest Instagram handle that I know personally. Yeah. Why do you do this to us? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, 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 that was also uh, another joke related to what you just said, but that's beneath me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, every, all the links to your YouTube channel, to your uh, Instagram channel are all in Thanks. the description um, for the people who want to check it. And we're coming to an end. I want to say thank you to everyone listening to this till the end because it's uh, one over an hour already. And uh, people who listen to this till the end, I deeply respect them. And uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. I really, I'm happy if you can give a thumbs up, uh, comment if you liked it, comment the person who should be interviewed next. I already know that uh, under this video, uh, Javi will be uh, one of the most requested interview guests uh, because uh, he his name was always mentioned with yours or uh, lot of times so uh, yeah but apart from that big big thank you to everyone listening and Sergio you have the honor to end the episode and say goodbye to, to everyone yo first of all thank you thank you so much for having me and as you said thank you to all those people who reached the end of the video <laughs> and were interested by my ramblings and maybe were also motivated by what I said thank you so much Bye.